Yes, I got a residency interview. Let's go. I'm so pumped. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go to an interview. Don't panic, I got your back. Let me go over everything I've learned from my eight residency interviews. Let's do this. What is up? It's Dr. Andreas with another video. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help optometry students, residents, and new doctors with optometry related topics. If you're not in optometry, keep watching because this video can also help with any residency interview of any health professional. If you like the video, please consider smashing the like button below and subscribing to my channel. And now, off we go. Yes, you heard me correctly. I applied to eight sites, which in my opinion is too many, but as a result, I got interviewed eight times, which is actually a pretty interesting experience because it gave me the chance to get really good at interviews. And I know this is something that we've all had to do at some point uh, for things like college interviews, optometry school interviews, or scholarship interviews, but chances are it's been four years since your last interview, so you may be a little rusty. And a residency interview is a little bit unique. Before we start though, it is important to remember that if you got selected for an interview, that means the site coordinator is interested in you, but try to think of that as a positive instead of uh, getting nervous. Okay, so the first step before every residency interview is to do your homework, as in learn as much as you can about the program before the interview. Luckily, the ASCO database should have a lot of this information available for you. What's the schedule like? What days? What hours? Is it constant every week or are there rotations like a one month BV rotation or a contact lens rotation? Do you shadow any specialists? What are your requirements to be accepted? Is there a journal review every week? Do you need to present any grand rounds? Do you need to write a case report? Are you driving to, the lo to one location or are there multiple locations? You don't have to know everything by heart, but having a good grasp on how the program operates will one, help you decide if it's something you want to pursue, two, will help you follow along as the residency coordinator repeats all this stuff in more detail during the interview or the tour of the clinic, and three, it helps you come up with follow-up questions about the program that you can then ask. Part of your homework should include talking to current or past residents of the site in question. I forgot to mention this in my previous video on how to apply for residency, but a good idea is to question them early if you can. That way you can give them plenty of time to respond to your email. If you see them on interview day and you have time, yes, ask them questions. Some sites will be really cool about that. For example, Orlando let me have an hour lunch and the residents were there, so that was a good time to ask. Daytona actually let me sit in the exam room with each resident and that was a one-on-one -on -one conversation where I could really pick their brain for a bit. And that was super effective because I remember one of the residents saying, I hate driving, I'm 45 minutes away from the clinic, but I still love it here, and I feel way more comfortable managing disease and double vision walk-ins than before. So I was like, whoa, that's impressive, because I hate long commutes too, and I wasn't as comfortable with double vision at the time. However, big however, while you're questioning the residents, always, always, and always, take what they say with a grain of salt. Every residency experience is different, every year is different, every person is different. I say this even when people ask me about my experience as an Orlando resident. I loved it, but take everything that I'm about to tell you with a grain of salt. Because you might be the type that hates journal review. You might be the type that prioritizes leaving work early. That's me. Getting out of work at 4 p.m. the latest every day was amazing for me. Bascom Palmer though, you're there till like 7 p.m. I know I would hate being there just for that reason, but Bastion Palmer is consistently ranked number one in the nation as an ophthalmology clinic, and you see an ungodly amount of disease, so staying there late might be worth it for you. Do you want to see as many walk-ins as possible? Bay Pines might be great for you. Do you not want to ever be on call during your residency? Bay Pines might not be great for you. Then of course, if somebody says, I hate this residency because X, Y, and Z, maybe ask the other resident and see if they agree. Maybe understand why they hate it and see if you would hate that too, or if it's not as big of a deal for you. I remember for Orlando, I was already planning to rank them high, but during the interview lunch, I kind of got discouraged because the past residents made a few comments that I didn't quite like, and they made it seem not as great as initially thought to be, which did affect how I ranked the site. But then after I matched with Orlando, I told them that I matched, and they were like, you're gonna love it, it's awesome here. So I'm guessing they had a really bad day that day. I don't know, maybe patient care was intense that day, or they had an argument with the preceptor. Basically, take everything with a grain of salt. Next step in the interview process, this is going to sound very simple. Be prepared to observe when you're there. What do I mean? Look around while you're there and ask yourself, does the work environment seem aesthetically pleasing? Um, can you see yourself seeing patients here? How are the doctors addressing you or anyone else? What's their demeanor like? How is the clinic set up? How many tech rooms, how many resident rooms are there? Does the equipment look new? Are there scribes? 
Probably not, but that would be really nice. You get the gist. It's the same thing that you did during your optometry school interviews. You were observing the environment to see if you can see yourself working here for an extended period of time. Some sites like Salisbury, VA, North Carolina were really good about that because they let you shadow the resident for like two hours, which uh, not only is enough time to ask them questions, but you can kind of see how they're going about their business. And I know that they may act or work differently because you're there, but, but you can still ask them questions like, hey, is it usually this busy here? Or are the preceptors usually as available as they are today? Like, be real with me. Again, grain of salt, but observe what's kind of going around around you. Next step, and the most important step of all, be ready for the main questions, of course. These are residency interviews, so there are a few things that you'll likely get asked no matter where you go as a way to gauge your professionalism, clinical competence, or clinical drive. But before we get to those clinical questions, the first few things you'll want to nail are basic questions that you'll likely get asked in any interview of your life. First off, tell us about yourself. Pretending you're on a first date, what are you going to say to personalize yourself and to pique interest? Hey, I'm Andreas, I'm from Clearwater, but I grew up in Greece, I love playing soccer, I play pickup every Saturday, pre-COVID I love to travel, I usually go to Europe in the summers or I go to Canada since I actually have family there, and also I'm really passionate about eyeballs and that's why I'm here. Whatever your hobbies, interests, and passions are, just be ready to sell yourself in terms of compatibility because that's what you're doing. You want them to think, oh, it'd be nice to have this doctor here for a year. Other general questions about optometry could be things like, what made you want to pursue optometry? And what is your end game after residency? Private practice, ODMD, business owner, teaching, VA hospital. So for me, I got lit of my when I was eight from playing a lot of video games, but not, not so much. And it lasted like six weeks to the point where my mom was like, what's wrong with my kid? So my initial visit at this young optometrist office in Greece was really cool. And it started my interest in the field. But there were other things too, like I thought the eyeball was fascinating in anatomy class, and I did pretty well in the optics part of physics, and many of my close friends were also interested in healthcare, so I kind of ended up being fixated on eyes, uh, which got cemented when I shadowed some local optometrists. And then my plan was to do residency and move on to private practice, which is where I'm at right now. Now for the juicy stuff, the interview questions. You're pretty much guaranteed to get asked, why do you want to pursue residency? Which is something you should already know, because you're pursuing it, right? You can always check out my Is Residency Worth It video uh, up here if you want some reassurance on your decision. Uh, but yeah, you should be able to give a few reasons um, why you want to spend the next year of your life undergoing more training instead of practicing. Then once you do that, I'm sure a follow-up question would be, okay, why should we pick you? Why are you fit for the job and why should they not just pick someone else instead? Sell yourself. Think of what your strengths are, think of what your passions are, and highlight them. Also know what your weaknesses are because you may get asked that as well. As you may know, a typical job interview question is, tell us any flaws or weaknesses about you, which is super annoying, right? Because it's almost a trick question. So know what your weakness is, be wary of it, um, if you should actually say it, um, or find a way to express your weakness in a positive manner. Like, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm too hard on myself, or I may take too much time with the patient to make sure that treatment is spot on, or I'm so knowledgeable in textbook disease that I get lost in the, in the differentials when I see a non-textbook case, but that's why I'm here, to fix that. Of course, don't say you're a perfectionist if you're not a perfectionist. Still be honest with what you're saying because body language and expression can often tell them more than just you talking. Sell yourself, but be genuine in expressing yourself. Okay, so next juicy question. This may be asked in different ways, but what you wanna do is to look back at some of your most memorable cases in clinic. Were any of them very interesting, difficult to manage, any emergency situations, any cases where you learned some valuable lessons like don't do this when, when managing a specific patient. Basically, what your interviewers want to do is to get a glimpse of what you may be like as a resident, and part of that is visualizing how you handle certain cases or what made you excited as a student doctor. I don't want to give any examples so people don't just use my examples in their interviews, but even now as a doctor, I sometimes call my patients to triage them if they have an urgent need, and I vividly remember my phone call with my 80-year-old patient a month ago uh, whose main complaint was diplopia. But the more she spoke and the more follow-up questions I had, the more she made suggest that she had giant cell arteritis. So when she finally admitted to scalp tenderness and jaw collocation, I was like, ooh, that's not good. No, that's, that's not good. And it turns out the lab work came back with a high ESR and CRP. So she had giant cell arteritis. So that phone call is now embedded in my head and I use it as a constant reminder to probe for GCA in older patients. Now, your clinical experience don't have to be as crazy, but any case that you think is memorable in any way, I think it'd be shared in a way that can give your interviewer more information about you. 
Will you get tested on patient cases? To be honest, it depends on the site. Only three of my eight sites actually quizzed me, but then again, two of the sites that didn't quiz me were the sites that I was actually doing my rotation already. So I felt like they didn't need to quiz me because they did that for three months straight. I would try to brush up on some patient cases, uh, but don't freak out too much about it. Most sites, if they're going to quiz you, I would imagine just to want to test basic competence. How do you handle an obviously glaucomatous nerve? Or what would you do in a patient with a corneal abrasion? Or if you see some hemes in a diabetic patient, what, what, what do you do? And if they throw a really difficult case at you, they probably don't even care if you get it right. They just want to see how you would react to that case. I remember there was one site that gave me a PowerPoint of eight retinas and I had to describe them and tell the doctor what I thought each case was. And I was supposed to email the responses. We would go over the results at the interview. <laughs> That's stressful, man. And there was one case in particular where I looked at the retina for like 30 minutes and I was like, what the fuck? And so I wrote down my differentials and I went to the interview and do you know what he, what he said the answer was? He's like, I saw this patient five years ago and I still don't know what it is. And I was like, Phew, dude, thank God. So basically review your stuff, don't freak out. Just go to the interview and just answer every question as if you're in clinic. Because at the end of the day, you're a student doctor, not a doctor yet. And even doctors don't know everything, and we're always trying to improve. That's why it's called practicing optometry. And so just have fun with it. Look forward to being quizzed, uh, because you might learn a few things. Because I definitely did. And to this day, I sometimes remember some of those cases, and I'm like, huh, that was an interesting case. Okay, what other questions could you get asked? Well, I imagine they could ask you any follow-up questions on what you have provided on your CV, from questionable board scores to a low grade in a, specific, in a specific course, or they could ask anything about your extracurriculars. So just look at your application and think, hmm, what might they wanna know more about? Of course, you just have to accept that you can't be prepared for everything. You're just gonna to have to wing some of this stuff, especially since they, they might just ask these random questions just to get to know your personality. Honestly, those questions can be more revealing than some of your clinic questions, and I think that's a good thing. One example, Dr. Joy from Salisbury VA was like, Oh, I see from your CV, you competed at the student ball at the AOA meeting. And I was like, yeah, I was a student that they picked from Nova. And then he's like, so what happened there? Why didn't you win? And I was like, huh. I said something along the lines of that I knew myself, but some of the questions were too easy. So it was just more of a test of your reflexes um, than what you know, and I wasn't the fastest person. But I also kind of admitted that I froze in front of an audience. So we laughed about that. Another weird question I got for somebody was, what was your most embarrassing moment in clinic? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't know, but probably a lot of stuff. But like, that's such a random question that I had no way of preparing for. And then I got nervous because I didn't want to sit there for like a whole minute to brainstorm different moments uh, that I had. So if you get a random question, don't freak out too much. Sit back and think for a little bit. I'm sure you're not the only one who got stumped on that question. So you're definitely allowed to ask, hey, can I think about this for a little bit? But of course, don't just sit there for forever and then be like, I don't know. Even if you can't think of a great answer, if you have an okay answer or an answer, even if you don't think it's just great, just say it because the spontaneity of it may be appreciated more, it probably seem more authentic. To go back at that question, what was your most embarrassing moment in clinic? I got lucky and remembered um, when I was at the Columbia VA in South Carolina, and my, me and my preceptor, Dr. Sarah Wilson, were discussing a case involving a patient with a visual field defect. This was at the end of the day, the last patient already left, so after talking about the case, she puts her arm out like this because she wanted to grab the visual field off my hand. And I instead shake her hand. Ugh, I'm still cringing about that. But we had a laugh about it though, and my interview was laughed, so I think I answered that question pretty well. Whatever your moment is, uh, whether they ask you for an embarrassing moment or a difficult moment or most satisfying moment in clinic or whatever, as long as you have a decent example that happened to you, then that's all you can ask for. Once the interview is basically done, there is one question that you typically get asked. Do you have any questions? And that can always be tricky to answer, but before I talk about this, it is generally a good idea to try to ask a question or two at the end of the interview to show interest. Like, is there on call? Or what's your favorite part about your job? I love that question, by the way. But of course, don't try to ask a really easy question that can be found on the ASCO database, because then they may question if you actually done your research on them, or if you just weren't paying attention at all during the whole tour. Now I did say this is generally a good idea, not that you have to do this. People always try to give advice for interviews saying that you need to have questions to ask at the end of the interview, but that's not necessarily true. Ideally, you should be asking questions throughout the whole interview process uh, as you're presented information about the program. If you get asked at the end of the interview and you have legit questions, then great. If not, don't panic. There were a few interviews I had which by the end I couldn't think of any questions because either I asked them earlier or because they did such a thorough job explaining everything 
um, that I didn't have any more questions. If that happens, I usually say something along the lines like, wow, I had a few questions about blank and blank earlier and a few other questions, but you answered everything already, so I can't think of any more. But I will email you if I come up with any questions after I leave. That's actually exactly what I said after my Orlando interview because Dr. Spaulding spent hours with the PowerPoint outlining everything about the program and then answer questions that me or other residents had during the group part of the interview before the one-on-one -on -one even happened. One last comment to wrap up this whole video. Remember, you're not just getting interviewed, they are being interviewed as well. So try not to look at it as if you're being interrogated, but more like a conversation to see if you're a good fit for each other. Yes, you have to show competence as a future resident, but be yourself and let them see your personality because at the, at the end of the day, regardless of your skills, they'll need to decide if they like you as a person and a potential coworker. Um, and you'll need to decide if you'll be happy there. And that's what ranking your sites is all about, which I'll try to work on in another video. And that's all I got guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, right? If not, still feel free to binge watch my channel and help a fellow OD climb up that YouTube algorithm. But good luck, you'll do great on your interviews and you will get your mass residency site in no time. See you later.